Mm. Mm. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Call of the Thought and Sing. Bless the girl. Welcome to each and every one of you, to our speakers, Melissa, Frederick, Lee, and Dawn, and to each of you who join this conversation. And I want to acknowledge that this particular one has been far and away the least subscribed to. And that makes me even more determined to have this conversation, a conversation that people don't seem to want to join or don't seem to want to have. And this is going to get recorded and put on the internet. And I want to dedicate this conversation to all girls everywhere today and tomorrow, future generations in our culture and the conversation it may not be ready to have, but we here are willing to have. And I want to deeply thank each and every one of you for showing up this evening and dedicate our conversation to all the young people all around the world and their wholesomeness and their flourishing and that their soul needs and their physical needs and their love needs get supported by the adult community and they're not left alone to flourish, to, 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 found, to flounder and fall, that they get met with a web of love that lifts them up and helps them find a good way in this world and that this conversation be in service to that in the particular realm of intimacy, but not limited to that. So thank you so much for coming. Let's begin by just landing. Give the feet a wiggle, bring the awareness to the sensations there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bring the awareness to the weight in the seat, the sit bones if you're sitting, help the body just notice the weight sitting there to land. And we'll take a nice deep breath, make any kind of sound on the exhalation. Ah, soften the sides of the tongue and widen into our eyes. And yeah, and then maybe with one breath's worth of sound, we'll send that intention out into the sphere so that it goes far and wide. So let's take a deep breath. Pa -da -da. Yes. Um, so just so you know, I think I already said it, but these these calls are recorded and they go onto YouTube and uh, and they stay there forever. So every, nothing that you say is confidential. Um, but there it is. So, yeah. So I called this gathering together. We are gathered here today, my friends, because in the song that we heard on the way in, Bless the Girl, it came in a moment. I happened to be very triggered and was lucky to be by a grand piano. And as I was triggered, I danced into the trigger, as Melissa Michaels so wisely taught me to. And in the dance came the images of the time in my teens when sexuality was arriving in my being and how dangerous it was in Britain in the 1990s in East Anglia to show that in any way, how very, very dangerous it was. And feeling as I danced into the revolution that was needed in how young people are supported and how sexuality's arrival in the young is, is held by the community or by some kind of mentor or support people. Um, and so that song, Bless the Girl, sings to that. And I think my reality living in this world as a 42 year old woman is so many of my friends lost their virginity to rape. I'm going to say some hard stuff now. Um, in our privacy of our conversations among women, we talked about who was raped at 12, who was raped at 14, who was raped by two people at once, who has been raped three times. Our mothers have been raped, our teachers have been raped, we have been raped. The Me Too movement brought, I think, collective awareness to this epidemic of violation that's happening in the culture, but I'm not sure that we have really started to face what we need to do to prevent it. Our bodies are sacred, sexuality is the highest, holy, oh my goodness. And that that should be a territory of power over and violation and war is I think at the heart of the sickness in our culture that so many of us are rising to heal. And so I invite you together this evening to share the question with me, like what do we need to do as adults in service in this culture 
to to heal this and as most of us work with other people as filmmakers as teachers as performers as singers as leaders what do we need to do and what does anyone like us need to do what do parents need to do what do, like what are some of the ideas we don't need to have the answers all of them but maybe we have pieces of the imagining we're going to use the voice in the body to help us digest digest the emotional trigger just <laughs> triggering the emotional charge of this so let's have a little warm-up just move your body we're going to get our voices ready you can sing on mute but you're, you're invited to sing have just a move a wiggle <sighs> great and have a deep yawn into one half of your mouth and down one side of your throat oh and the other side oh oh you all is so beautiful stick your tongue deeply out deeply in you look wonderful inhale into the nasal cavities good make some heady sounds any kind of heady sound good some throaty sounds good you can stand up if you want to and lots of you want to it's great breathe into the chest make some chesty sounds i'm gonna start it hey la 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 Good. Breathe into the diaphragm. Make some diaphragm sounds. Beautiful. Breathe into the belly. Make some belly sounds. Good. Breathe into the pelvis. Make some pelvic sounds. Make some sounds from your bowers to your head. Good, that's it. So we, in our work with vocal improvisation, we use a terribly important tool called creature language, which is also talking nonsense. It does this. And then we sing it. So try speaking a little nonsense. Go ahead, have a go. Oh, Dawn's already on it. <laughs> How do you feel being here? Let your creatures express it. <laughs> and then you, <laughs> you're so fun. And then you can start singing it. <sighs> oh, beautiful. I wish I could hear you all. Sadly, you're all on mute. And if we heard you all, it would be chaotic. So that's it. So bring that to a close. And um hear our voices so it, at various points in between speakers and such we might take some time to to call off the thought and sing and just let our voices digest and move things so we're going to hear four speakers we'll have a dance break that melissa will lead i mean we are absolutely blessed blessed to have melissa lead us in some movement part way through we'll have a little comfort break midway and um and then hopefully there'll be time at the end to have some pair of shares and hear from some of you so yeah that's what we're hoping for so first of all i'd like to invite melissa michaels melissa has been in a in a lifelong way like devoted to the service of young people particularly through dance five rhythms and youth initiation work she's an absolute pioneer in the field she has held profound space for my healing and my healing of younger parts within me i'm indebted to her and so grateful forever she's a huge mentor and teacher and inspiration of mine melissa thank you so much for being here and she's also founder of golden girls global which is a global organization melissa is supporting women all around the world who are then working with girls in their country to support body heart soul creativity sexuality wellness empowerment and soul initiation melissa thank you so much um all the speakers will get a 10 minute bell. So I'll give you a 10 minute bell. Melissa, I'd like to ask you like, what is needed? What do the youth need that our culture isn't providing for them? And what do we do about it? Thank you, Bryony. It is a total honor and joy to be in your embrace and to be bringing the streams of our creative intelligence together in this new way. And I bow to all that is moving through you and I'm so inspired by you. So good morning. We're in morning over here. And I guess that is a pun. Um, 
in this, we're actually close to midday here in the Rocky Mountains. And in the spirit of what has happened to the creative life force of the girls, I would be remiss to not acknowledge that I stand on the original land stolen of the Ute, the Cheyenne and the Arapaho here right now. And this story goes back a long ways apparently of um, who wins and who loses when we divide and conquer, when we rape and pillage, when we separate spirit from flesh, head from heart, from will, soul from body. And the irony is the soul and the body can really actually never be disconnected. They can be lost and we have to help them get found. And I feel that's our work as um, olders and elders, as humans, as practitioners navigating with others these incredible thresholds that we're facing in these times not just the normal developmental ones of birth and adolescence and death and the many subtler ones in between, the seasons, the waking and sleeping, but all the life crises that we are facing at these times, war, pandemic, economic, and of course, what's happening with our environment. How do we navigate through these times and not shut down? Because the very intelligence that we need to answer the questions of these times is tied up in that creative, sexual, very fertile energy that runs through all of us. She, they, and he who is becoming. So um, I've been sitting with, what do we do? <laughs> and I've been sitting with that my whole life starting with my own biography, because as so many of us, I came upon the uh, very turbulent waters of adolescence with no ground in my being, disassociated, obese, dealing drugs and enraged, and nobody around me knew what to do with me. I mean, I know what they would do with me now, they would medicate me and probably who knows what else, and blessings to the medication, there's a place for it. But it is not the only solution by any means for working with the incredible distress and, and depression and anxiety and um, dysregulation that we're seeing in our young people. And that's what I really devoted myself to. And I'm so blessed to have been hurting enough to have had to take myself up quite seriously and to have been open. I was looking for something to fill me. And it was really the spirit and the medicine of teachers and mentors who I had um, enough health to be able to find them and for them to recognize me basically by the way I showed up. So dance was my first, um, first true love other than um, really but my first true, true love. Um, there were things along the way that gave me a glimmer of that devotion and that longing to be um, taken and penetrated and opened by something so much bigger than myself, which is a normal developmental need of all adolescent beings, really of all of us, but it's a mandate at that particular time where we are journeying from the ideally safe shores of childhood, which of course is so rarely the case at this time on the planet, through these transformational waters of adolescence into ideally creative, productive, connected adulthood. So, you know, the key to the fairy tales, one of my great teachers, Claudia McLaren, always says is what's missing, you know, and what was missing was support through adolescence for me. And what was missing was a way to find my way home into, the, into this body and to come into relationship with it. And what was missing was what to do with all these strong emotions. We didn't have a place for girls who had anger and I was really pissed and for good reason. And we didn't have a place for this um, stirring of energy that is really creative and, and fertile and sexual and longing to channel through us so that we can feel our aliveness and, and really make love with all of life. And it gets cheapened, it gets, it gets very narrowly focused. And now, for young people, it comes fast and early, and in and 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 it's um, what's the word? <laughs> it's capitalized upon, you know. And and not only are the abductions happening in the way that Bryony described earlier, but they're happening all the time. Every like click, there's another. I'm not enough. 
Oh, this is what I, this is what it is to be sexual. Oh, this is what it is to be in a body. And of course it doesn't care for the most precious thing that our young people need, which is the natural organic unfolding of the parts of their being so that they can, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a one day it comes online. I think it's an incredible organic emergent process of coming into these delicious bodies of like learning how to feel all these different feelings of excitement and, and fear. And we've all, some of you've heard me speak about this and, and of course our anger and our sadness, but our joy and our capacity to really see another and love and be open to giving and receiving energy. And when those channels, the head, the heart and the will come into congruency, there's something that opens with the head and the soul. And we start to go, oh, this is who I am. And this is what I want to do with my fertile. And I share this image and I'll talk for a brief minute about this in a minute. With my fertile energy, with this womb energy, regardless of my gender, with my, with my seed, with my fertile flow and my menstrual flow, with this amazing, magical, alchemical phenomenon that happens in me, whether I want to make babies or projects, write books or save the world, you know? And so something happens there. And if we can hold a space for it, then we can really help young people hear their destiny. And their destiny is definitely tied up with the tragedy and the challenges of these times. And so we have to hold the riddle of that. And I'm going to close because I bet my time's nearly up, but I want to say a few really important things. You have three to... minutes left. Thank you. I think the biggest piece around all of this is like, where is everybody right now? Why are they not in this conversation? Because we think that the girls don't matter. We think, well, I, I got through that or, you know, whatever. But look at, look at Emma Gonzalez. Look at Simone Biles, look at Greta Thunberg, look at Malala, look at Amanda Gorman, look at, look at Billie Eilish and, and, and others. Those are the ones whose names we know. There are millions of others of young humans, she and they who are becoming, who have the answers to the questions of this time. And it keeps certain energies in power if we close our ears to them and continue to subjugate them. But if we can nourish them with the warmth of our hearts, if we can be with them with our own digested relationship with our own fertility and sexuality, which is a big ask, we can hold a space for them to come through the very narrow passageways of their own adolescent becoming into adulthood and give them the proper place, not laugh at them with the, for, for their big ideas, but listen deeply and humbly so that we can partner and create something together. Because I, I do believe you go into a family, you go into a village, you go into a community, you wanna know what's going on? Ask the teenage girls, she, they who are becoming, because they have a relationship with truth even if they have been abducted and separated from themselves, or maybe even more so. So um, we actually need to center this conversation. And Bryony, you have, and I have spent much of my life doing the same. And the, and, and, and the thing I just wanna say is it's rigorous work to really transform our own biographies. My heart still uh, weeps not just with my story, because I've actually pretty much digested my story. And I mean, I'm always discovering how to be a, a more whole, more uh, congruent version of myself, but it's rigorous work to look at what happened, to look at the cost and to do the, um, and I've had the privilege of so much support. That's a big piece of this, is utilizing what resources we do have. And we have the natural world and we have the elders and we have each other. <sighs> and we have a creative process. And we have these blessed hands that have so much healing for ourselves. And so when we welcome the young people, please let's do so with that kindness, with that humility, with that self-reflection and with beauty, which is why I teach this way rather than with um, all the stuff we see in quote unquote sex and which quantifies something that is so holy and so magical and so mystical and so messy and could never be unless someone's trying to control it. And the beautiful thing about that fire is. Mm. Thank you. Mm.
Melissa, do you want to unmute and make some noise or some shape or something for Melissa? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Work. Thank you for what you're saying. <laughs> oh, let's take a moment to go on mute and call off the thought and sing like I'd like sing through or move through like what is alive in you having listened to <laughs> Okay, someone has spotlighted me. Do you, can you can 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 you unspotlight me? Um, ah, so Dawn, we're going to move now to Dawn. So Melissa has this absolutely beautiful um, slideshow of Golden Girls Global, and I'm not feeling that right now is the time. I think we're going to talk a little bit more here, some more voices, and we're going to we're going to come. To um, so I'd like to move to Dawn now. So Dawn Shuri. Um, I met Dawn at the Network for New Culture Gathering many years ago, where she led one of the most profound shadow healing workshops I've ever done through her incredible Shakti, her incredible use of the body and dance and the poetry of her voice and the depth work that she leads people through on the mic while we're all dancing. She's an incredibly profound, incredibly powerful facilitator of transformation and healing. She is lead facilitator at ISTA, the International School of Temple Arts, which works on sexual healing and sexual liberation and mm. I to an ISTA that Dawn led. And, you know, Dawn, one of the things we talked about when we were on that, like the participants as we were talking with each other, is so much of what we were, was happening was with the work is it was it was retrospectively working our team. And we were having some of the support and the possibility and the speaking truth to actuality that just wasn't happening culturally at all at the time. So Dawn, I think my question for you in this realm of like the untended realm of the adolescent or like adolescents who have family stuff and they have school stuff, but there's this, this whole realm of them, the sexual, the spiritual, the embodied, the emotional that isn't often isn't tended by either in your work with adults and their sexual healing and they're, they're coming into integrity with what their sexual truth might be, which is often out of the box of like this little box that society is, says is sanctioned. Like, what do you see was needed, is needed for adolescents? And like, if you Dawn, if you were queen of the world, if like, if it was like the world according to Dawn, like what would be happening culturally in this time that would actually meet the needs that you're having to repair in adults when they come to you 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years later. And thank you so much for being with us tonight. And thank you so much for your work. Thank you. Thank you, Bryony. Thank you for the song that broke through um, my walls. There was a little bit of uh, tenderness as I'm caretaking an elderly mother and and um, and realizing that there's that little scared girl in all of us, or that little scared boy, and sometimes my my limited worldview gets angry at the 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 wounded. The as much as I'm pouring my love every day into this this woman who gave me life <sighs> sometimes there's such sadness that i see the i know consciously that the victim um the victimhood is being perpetuated from the, my grandmother through my mother into me it was it was through unknowingly through the placenta and i see how her fear and her abuse was is imploding now in her sickness 
And it's literally like you see this little precious child, like, because this is what happens when we become elderly, we become like a child. And it's like, like this innocence and what wasn't healed just becomes either ugly or, or just sad. And it, it, it causes, it can cause us disease. And, and so, yeah, so I'm, I, I heard your song and it just melted the place inside me that says I'm other, I'm something other. And her, her way of closure is different. It might look different from mine because sometimes my story is different and your story is different. So how do we love the places inside another because of the victimization and the abuse that has happened over time, the unhealed? And how do we love those people? And how do we love them open? We love them open through song. We love them open through wisdom, through knowledge of what is, of what is actually happening inside our own bodies. So I am seeing this again and again, people coming to trainings and, and they have the, the seeming appearance of an adult. <laughs> And yet, one after another, the, the wounded child comes in and they act out. And, and, um, and so what we can do is love them. First of all, say, I love you and I see you and I'm holding space for whatever ugly, messy, uncomfortable to emerge. So one of the tools that we do in ISTA is uh, the emotional release tools, the letting it out of your body, letting it move through you, but not just in dance, which I'm uh, dancing for 35 years, you know, five rhythms and dance. And, and so I'm addicted to that and I believe in it, but consciously taking the, 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 um, the toxic sludge out of our body. So if the if if I was the, if I was the queen of this world, I would let everyone do emotional release before they come into any meetings and get, are carrying all their icky stickies. <laughs> do your oh, your hand scream. Do the oh, power stomping. Look silly and 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 let your grief. Uh, open up your heart and, and let the grief and tap into what is it? Is it grief? Is it anger? Is it, is it sadness? What's, what's making you um, not effective in this world? What's making you lash out and be angry and rape either verbally or physically? What's, what is causing the root? What's at the root and the heart? So clear out the, the toxic sludge so some of it's like old, really like, oh, sticky, messy. And then give yourself some sweetness after. Create, um, get current. So clear out the old stuff and over time, you'll get more, it'll be, yeah, you'll do it for five minutes. In the beginning, you'll, you'll need to do this for 20 minutes and so, that's the emotional, that's for everyone. And I'm gonna speak something about the men's and women's work that we do in this world. I, for years, was only working, prim only working with women. In Israel, I, I moved, uh, initiated the Red Tent Movement and, and this had already been coming, you know, flourishing in, in America, so I had the pleasure of living in Israel for 14 years and bringing it and, 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 and opening up the eyes and, and simply the, the voices of the women who had never talked about their blood, who had never known that their blood was sacred, and the myriad of things that, that, are, that are available right now. There's so much available, like every other post I see is the blood and the blood and look at my blood and hallelujah, we're, we're at that stage of development in in, in Western society that is 
is available, is, is availing themselves of that. So that's, I, I think, yes and more, yes and more. Get to know the cycles and what happens for you when you're menstruating, when you're before your moon, fall and winter and, and, and summer and like I'll go through all of the seasons and really get to see like when I teach people what it happens within the bodies of women and the psyches and I take everyone who's in the training and I put them in the different different cycles and the men are around them and they listen to the stories and they say oh my god why did no one tell me this why did no one tell me that the that this person is ovulating of course they're shining and glowing and and when and then there's a very important time when when you need to cocoon in you know and so I'm not going into the elaborate teachings that are available in abundance now online and through 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 wisdom schools and through ISTA. But what I want to say is how important it is to demystify the mysteries of the blood, to let the men in, to to bring our brothers in, to say you it's not just a woman's thing. One out of three women are sexually abused. One out of six men are. This is across the board. One, if not one of the more insidious things that happen within the communities of our brothers and our fathers. So let their tender, tender voices be spoken. We have the red tent and we have the white tent and the men always are saying, I didn't know, I didn't know about my ejaculate. I didn't know when I first, when I, when am I, when, when I got aroused and I didn't know. Educate our, our youth at a very early age before it happens and teach the healthy ways of penetration that your phallus is a peacemaker, that this is, a precious, as is our yoni, as is the phallus, that is a precious thing on on your body and you are honored to carry that. And and, and it's, it's embodied in the culture, it's embodied in the way that, that young boys and young girls have the safe place to talk about the questions that are uncomfortable, that that are that are that are difficult. Hmm. My son is a beautiful um, <laughs> being, and 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 uh, soon to be educator and organizer in Easter. And when he came of age, he included uh, us in his ceremony. He went to Tamara. And at 16, he um, said, I'm going and I, this is time. I want to, to, to have a conscious ceremony of lovemaking. But this is possible. <laughs> this is, is not having the boy sneak into the house and sticking the, the condom in the in the toilet and, and you know having it come out in the sewer in the, in the you know clogged pipes. This is this is the way of healthy education. And so when he made love and he told us the next day and he and and it was like it was such joy that he that he revealed this to us. And and he got to share some of the uncomfortable things that sometimes he, he got to have uncles and aunties that he could say, you know, sometimes I find arousal in, 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 my, in my parents' friends or people that I shouldn't, you know, maybe I, I'm confused. And so he got to have people that were not his parents because sometimes the parents are too close, you know, and you can't say things to the, to the parents. They're right there. So you, you need a, a, and a good community of friends, a tribe of people. And, and don't force kids before they're, they're ready. Because when they're ready, they will ask. But gently let them know, these, these are the books, this is the information that you can 
avail yourself of and it's here and sure enough he ate everything up that we gave him so men and women together mysteries revealed we need this now mm. Ooh, Dawn, let's make some noise or shape <laughs> thank you <laughs> oh. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's mute and use our voices and make some sound like how that landed on you or how that impacted you. <laughs> Mm. oh it's good to use the voice isn't it i think we're gonna turn to frederick next and then have a bit of a boogie we might do the the um the slideshow towards the end i think maybe minister if that's okay is, is that okay yeah great so frederick one of the only two men in the room thank you both for being here thank you frederick very much for being here and um ah oh, so Frederick is a, an amazing filmmaker and um, and has been working for a long time with the Mankind Project. And Frederick, you made a, a trailer for a film about rites of passage that I think, interestingly, unlike much of your other work, you couldn't get it funded, if I understand rightly, to, to become a full thing, whereas your other work attracted... I mean, this is, I don't... I don't, I don't say that because I'm pointing out a failure. I say that because like, why the hell did that not get funded? Like that was such an important film. And interestingly, you know, for Bless the Girl, I applied for funding to make a music video of a rites of passage for girls ceremony. It didn't get funded. I didn't, I, have, I can't make that video without funding. It didn't get funded. Why didn't it get funded? I want to show this possibility culturally. I want to put it in a music video. I want to spread it around. I want to put seed, seed vision in people's minds. And then, and then Frederick, when we initially had this conversation, I said, hey, Frederick, you know, you know, the statistic that like women at US colleges, like one third of them will be raped before they graduate. And, you know, and that means that like one third or so of um, US male college students will be raping one of their colleagues before they graduate. I said, I said to him when we had the, opening, the conversation leading into this, I was like, hey, Frederick, do you know anybody in the men's work movement in the US doing prevention work on that? He said, do you know I don't? I'm like, oh, like, huh. <laughs> so, so Frederick, like, what is, what is going on? Like, what is going on? This stuff is so needed. Why is this work not getting funded? Why am I, why are we not organizing around this? What do you see happening and not happening in the men's work movement and in this need for village and this need for conscious, loving, people willing to speak honestly about sexuality with young people and be available for questions. And what do you think is going on, Frederick? Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Brian. It's, it's good to see you and it's good to be with all of you today. Uh, I, was, I was really moved by the song that you played at the beginning. Uh, it really touched me and opened my heart. Um, you know, there's there's a there's a lot of things that are going on, and actually, I think a lot of them are very very positive, uh, uh, if you will, from sort of the men's side of the of this equation. Um, but uh, I'm not quite sure where it would be most productive to to sort of begin my part of this contribution. Um, well, and here's just one piece of data. I mean, the Mankind Project has taken a public stand uh, um, against uh, sexual abuse and violence and harassment and rape. Uh, uh, this is, it's relatively recent. I think it was maybe five, 10 years ago. I have COVID brain, so I can't remember exactly. Um, and actually, one other thing I want to say, you referenced it yourself, Brian, you know, I'm here uh, with Oliver as one of the two men identifying as men uh, present. And um, 
that that uh, brings up some fear in me that I want to foreground, uh, and it also brings up sadness uh, because uh, it, it, on the face of it, it's easy to deduce that oh well, men aren't really involved in this conversation, but that's actually not the case. Uh, they're just not present here with us today. But I also feel a certain responsibility. I mean, as the the lone male speaker here today, to <laughs> to do what I can to positively represent the side of uh, the, the the male side of this equation. Um, so uh, let me let me just start by by talking about my personal story. You know, I was nine when my father suddenly died of a heart attack, and I was on the way to the funeral when my uncle put his hand on my shoulder and he said, well, Freddie, you're the man of the house now. And so, you know, it's easy today for us to see statements like that and dismiss them as, you know, uh, all kinds of misplaced responsibilities, you know, placed on, on children. But it, of course, happens every day. And of course, as that nine-year-old boy, I wanted to fulfill that expectation. I wanted very much to be um, a kind of uh, a husband, you know, to my own mother and to be a father to my older sister and younger brother. And of course, uh, my uncle didn't stick around to mentor me to show me how to do that. And no other men showed up to initiate me or mentor me into mature masculinity. So I had to kind of cobble together a kind of operative model uh, for myself to follow. And it became a lifelong pursuit for me uh, to try to figure out, you know, well, what is, how do we arrive at this, <laughs> this holy grail called mature masculinity? Um, which was a formulation, a term that I, you know, I have, I wasn't even introduced to until maybe around 40. Uh, so that, that began th this inquiry for me into rites of passage and into mentorship. And one of the things that I've learned along the way, this gets back to one of your questions, Brian, is why no one is here, why no one is, is, is arriving at the table to discuss uh, what for me is one of the most fundamental, uh, fundamentally important themes that's, uh, that should be on the, the front burner of everybody's agenda these days is initiation and mentorship. Um, you know, I, I tried to launch the film uh, back, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. And anyway, uh, there were many things that happened in those intervening years, but one of them was it became clear that I, that I have to actually educate people as to what the term actually means, and then also educate them uh, as to why it needs to be put on the front burner in society. So in a sense, you know, the film that I, I had in my mind, it, it kind of shifted focus in a way. Uh, so, just for the record, I still plan to make it. <laughs> but it's there's a lot of other ones that are that are uh, getting uh, ticked off the list first. Um, so, there, there's a couple notes that I made just in response to some of the things that I've heard along the way here that I'll just maybe share in a kind of a random fashion. Uh, but, you know, uh, it, I am reminded um, uh, from what I've heard, you know, that that sex is and can be what well, can be the ground of initiation uh, for both boys and girls. Um, and, and it's and it's such a, a sad recognition in a way that it uh, that there's so much unfulfilled potential that's happening there. Uh, you know, if we can reorient society in a way to recognize the sacredness of sex, um, then we can begin to basically incorporate it into a kind of an operative rites of passage understanding. 
uh, so that you know we don't leave our young people just floundering out there, um, de driven wild by hormones, uh, and and in effect struggling to find some way to define themselves as emerging men and women through this act uh, and being so unsupported in doing so. And so, and given that lack of support, you know, it's not surprising that so many uh, young men uh, acting out of their own shadows and society shadows sort of take sex uh, as, uh, as a proving ground uh, in, in shadow. And so hence we, we get rape, uh, you know, uh, so anyway, it's, uh, I just, I wanna reflect on what a huge lost opportunity it is there. Um, you know, uh, I also um, recognize that, you know, for girls, you know, experiencing menstruation and, and that, that first blood flow uh, is also, and, and some of you are obviously doing this work, which is fantastic, uh, but too often a, another missed opportunity uh, for initiation, you know, for, you know, this is a time that this needs to be made public and the, the community needs to be brought together uh, to ritually celebrate and honor, uh, you know, these girls in, for this passage. What's interesting to me and what I've observed about boys is that if they, they don't have their own uh, similar blood rite of passage. And so I think unconsciously they tend to seek out one uh, through uh, through whatever means that they can devise. Uh, so, you know, there, there are uh, rituals that date back to my childhood and beyond where boys will, you know, prick their fingers and put their blood together to signify that they are brothers for life. And uh, so that's a, actually, I think, a very positive ritual of, that reflects that unconscious need uh, but there's so many more that are not positive, of course, and they express themselves through violence uh, uh, of oneself and others. Uh, so that too, I think, in a, in a wholesome, productive society, we would recognize that boys need this. They need some kind of well, maybe literally brought into familiarity with their own blood uh, in ways that are controlled and safe, you know, so that they too can experience this, um, this liquid elixir of life in ways that are positive. Uh, I hope that's making sense. Um, you know, an, another thought that, that just came to my, my mind too was, around, you know, the wounding that we all carry, you know, it's so tempting. And, and of course, uh, the, the MO of society is to encourage us to uh, not look at our wounding, right? And to reach for whatever is at hand to uh, uh, repress the feelings that come up around our own wounding. Uh, and, and all I want to say really is that it's so essential that in a, in a reborn society that we would teach that uh, human growth is through the wounding. There is no end around. There's no way around it. We have to go through it. Uh, and, uh, and yet something uh, as simple as that, it seems to be you know, a mountain to climb in the society that we all, uh, that we all face right now. Um, well, I guess I'll just leave it at that. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for listening to my scattered thoughts. Oh, the deep words, Frederick, thank you. You're welcome to unmute and make some noise and some shade. Frederick, thank you. yee -hoo. thank you. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, thank you, Frederick. Ah. Yeah, 
Well, let's take a moment to, to, mm. to mute and to sing and voice like what is touched in you. I think what I would, the piece I want to repeat is, you know, Frederick, you're saying like shadow in the culture and you know, boys trying to prove, prove something or get, uh, you articulated it so well. And, and so we have rape. And for me, it's like, oh God, and that girls' bodies are the, are the ground of that and what it takes to get that wounding out of our systems, how profoundly it impacts us. Like what it's like, holy crap, it's some, um, I just, I'm in too much awe. So I hand over to Melissa, who can handle it better than I. Melissa is going to lead us through some dance. Usually we just put on a song and jump around because we need to with all this intensity and talking. But we have Melissa Michaels in the house now. So she's going to talk us through a bit more. Melissa, my dear, over to you. Okay, Bryony, my sweet friend, what we were intending just doesn't feel accurate right now. Okay. In terms of the music at all. Um, and I'm going to pick a piece that you made in our work and play you to us and lead us through a very simple, quiet, integrating moment. Okay. So and actually come into relationship with these bodies. And before I do that, I want to presence one thing, um, which is that we are all a boy and a girl just to different differing degrees. And I wanna presence the trans youth, those who are questioning, those who are in transition, those who are sitting in bodies that do not feel like they are home, who actually experience statistics beyond what has been mentioned here today. And I just wanna bring them in because also we have all of that it is not just yin and yang in any of us. So with that spirit, um, I'd like to pull up some music here. And um, Bryony, maybe at the end we'll rock it, but right now I want to, I just feel like something else is needed. Um, my heart is tender and my, uh, there's a lot of warmth here. And there's a lot of womb space that we can just open into regardless of our gender. So if you'd all be willing to step out of wherever you are and you can stay sitting if that's the best place for you or um, ah, just take a few moments to walk, to stretch those toes wide, to feel the ground that we stand on, the shaky ground, the incredible support of the wood or the carpet or wherever we are, perhaps we're even outside. And we're just gonna do the most basic thing like a mother or a father or a being does with their newborn or an adolescent does every day, one way or another. Am I okay? Where am I? Feet, knees, belly, pelvic floor, tailbone, soft jaw, right up through our organs of digestion and elimination of creation right up through our spine, that kundalini channel, up into our hearts, through our heads and our wings. We dance to Brian. Mm -hmm. Finding our feet, let this be your time. And if you don't see yourself as a dancer, just let your energy move. This is the ground of education for all of our young people. To open up the pleasure channel, with the places that are young and to begin to take interest in the places that may be hurting. Right foot and left foot. Sensations inside. Yeah. 
Rising up through knees, backs of legs, strong thighs. Hello. jaws relax and our eyes too as we open up this creative sensual sexual center. Brains down through our softening jaws, head connected to heart, to hips and belly. Head connected to hearts, to hips, to belly, tailbone, pelvic floor soft, jaws and throats open. Bright soles of our feet. Being with the aliveness, be it pleasure or what we identify as discomfort or pain, in the front of our body, the back, the right and the left. The upper and the lower. And just taking a moment as we come back to each other to just feel our own fertile, potent, vulnerable, complex creative center. Tailbone, pelvic floor. Womb space, regardless of our gender. And allowing ourselves to just stand in a way that honors this place of extraordinary mystery and It's gonna sound right up from our bellies and just right down through your pelvic floor and right up out through your throat. You can mute it or not. Yeah. 
and let those souls be bright. Yeah, thank you. Deep breath in and out, just letting the current that perhaps got opened a little bit. Let that breath move through as we come back and stay in close connection with self, skin, and the circulating energy. Thank you, Brian. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Melissa. Mm, beautiful. Whew. I'd forgotten about that track. My manager made me take the album offline <laughs> when I released the next one. But we recorded it in Colorado one morning before breakfast. Jai was was uh, making a compendium of the rhythms, and I was like, "Oh, there isn't enough stillness. Let me do stillness." So I, I improvised it layer by layer. Um, oh, thank you so much for saving and remembering that song. And I want to dig it out now. I love it. Ah. Oh. Thank you so much for leading us in movement so beautifully and with such attunement to our needs in this in this profound conversation we find ourselves in together. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for the resources, Frederick, in the chat. And um, you know, I often say we'll take a little loo break, but we don't have. I don't, you can take a loo break if you need one. I want to hand over to Lee. Um, Lee Senna, I met on Melissa's dance floor. Uh, dancing beside one another, healing together in a community of women on a on a on a sacred Californian hill. I think was it Ojai that we met. Mm. Um, Lee, you you are really interesting to me because you're a because you're Lee <laughs> and welcome to you. You're a pleasure and sexuality coach, and you work in this rites of passage field. And and having worked with youth rites of passage for a few years myself, what I found is the organization I worked with and most of the people that didn't really know how to deal with sex. So we kind of didn't. And some of these words like helping the boys understand the honor and the sacredness of their phallus, the honor of walking around with, you know, the sacredness of our, you know, like the sacredness of our bodies, our sexuality, these things like we didn't, I don't think we had, I did so much of my own sexual healing since supporting young young people in that that I was in a place I think 10 years ago to have that kind of literacy or that that relationship with my own body and sexuality such that I could be any kind of a guide in that realm so I'm really curious about what you what you see in your work and what you think is needed to make a healthier culture in this realm mm. Thank mm. you for being with us Lee mm. Yeah, such a pleasure to be here. You know, what I see in my own body as in so many other bodies, including the adolescent bodies, and it makes sense because the body of our earth is also um, this way, but our, our bodies have been colonized. And it's very rare to find a human, nonetheless, an adolescent that inhabits themselves without being veiled from their own wellspring of aliveness. You know, there's a lot of distortion from what is real inside of ourselves. And it's hard to find that because there's so many, you know, I always say like a thousand and one voices inside of ourselves that aren't ours, They're kind of plastered the skin of our body is plastered with a lot of ideas and thoughts and feelings that aren't necessarily ours. So I see often in adolescence and, you know, I work a lot with um, well, people with pussies and I'll just say the P word right now. I just love that word. Just use that word all the time in my work. And we're just reclaiming that word. Um, so I work with people who have that part of them between their legs from all kinds of different ages. But it's as if there's been this incredible disconnect, almost like a, a tree without a taproot. It's like, how, how are we existing without the taproot of our being? I don't, I don't get it, but it's happening. And so there's this 
there's this deep desire within me and my work in the world and also to just in my own process of healing and the healing of my daughters and all the peoples with pussies to be connected back to the wellspring of aliveness that's our birthright and our potential because of the fact that we inhabit a body and inhabit a body that has the capacity to, capacity to create life. There's an honor I want to see in our sex education with adolescents. I can almost feel the tears welling up when I say that. It's like for some odd reason, our, our sex ed has been stripped down to abstinence is the best way of not getting pregnant. Like that's what people learn about in terms of their bodies and the incredible potential that not only sensations of pleasure, but also being able to express and embody the full realm of sensations and emotions, the topographies of being human. My work within the field of sexuality is just as much helping our bodies slow down because the speed of, well, part of colonization is capital capitalism and it's a very fast, it's a, capitalism moves at a very fast speed. And so part of the education is retraining slowly over time, the nervous system, it takes time. It's like building a highway from California to North Carolina. You're like constructing new neural pathways in the body that can learn how to be out of fight or flight, learn, learn how to be out of hyper arousal, which is what happens, especially in our like social media algorithm culture that just feeds us more and more and more so we can devour so quickly. I see adolescents devouring information so quickly. I can't even keep up and I'm only 38. And so there's so much of this work that's also calling them back into, you know, we've, we've been, um, We've, we've heard of like slow food now, and there's a movement of, of cooking that's like slow food, like let's slow down and make some whole food meals here. And the same is, is with our bodies. Let's slow down <laughs> and come back into the whole terrain, this whole mighty, beautiful, powerful terrain of our bodies and learn how to kneel at the altar of our bodies with reverence and respect and get really real about what that means. Not just, um, not just have it live in the land of the poetic, even though I love, I love these poetic words. It's like, what does that really mean to respect yourself, to feel reverence towards yourself, to make decisions from that place? But then also to discover the vast topography of sensations. It's like we, you know, I'm, I'm trying to train my own brain and my own heart to see the possibility and all the things that are happening right now in the world. It's like, oh, ugh, this is hard. So where's the possibility? And, and the good news is there's a lot of possibility because there's a lot, of, a lot of confusion. So there's a lot of possibility. So it's like, okay, this is a time to really enter into a renaissance of, of, uh, honoring the multiple ways of seeing and sensing and being and then living within this body vessel. There's multiple different intelligences that are here. And how do we start to call them out more and embody and mentor and show and give permission and create spaces for adolescents, especially to inhabit their bodies in a lot of different ways and get to explore what that feels like. To, to sing, to dance, to be angry, to be in a grief lodge, to touch their own moon blood and rub it on their face like art and pour it into their plants and all the fun things that we're having access to that I did not have access to, you know, growing up in the Midwest, Iowa, United States, like I wasn't doing any of those things. And so there's already so much blooming there's already so much blooming within that which is also dying. So, so you know, 
if I was an adolescent, which I was once, and Melissa found me and basically saved my life. But if I was an adolescent here and now, like I'd be really struggling. I'd be pissed. I'd be confused. I'd be depressed because I don't see out there a lot of inspiring spaces. I don't see a lot of people inhabiting their whole selves. And so each and every person that can offer their heart to the world in these ways, whether it's through I mean, my girl just, just just like five months into bleeding and instead of having to like shove feminine hygiene products called tampons into her little developing pussy as she learns how to bleed by herself in the bathroom, which is what I had to do, she's getting given like organic cotton pads or um, you know, those panties that have like the really, really like liners, like, I don't even know. They're like the amazing underwear that you just wash and reuse. And I'm not only seeing those products out in the world that, you know, cost a decent amount of money. I'm seeing those same businesses spread these products in like uh, free ways to communities that aren't necessarily known to have the privilege of dollar bills in their wallets to buy all the fancy things that are being innovated. So I think what's coming from my heart right now to share is just that there's so many potentials and possibilities and there's a lot of people innovating. And some of what's needed is just to connect the innovation to the adolescents already to just, you know, create more surface area for all of the amazing juicy things, all the teachers, all the coaches, there's so many things arising in the space to, to be met more with the, the people who are in need. And there's so much opportunity for somatic and embodiment practice, practitioners to help our adolescents learn how to um, center and savor the sensations in their bodies, to learn how to inhabit one's own self without having to perform. I know performance was a big thing for me, like performing my pleasure to make sure I was good enough for the person I was having sex with that I didn't even really want to be because I didn't know how to speak my boundaries or the ways I ignored my pain versus learning how to express my pain, which is what I learned in, in Melissa's work, how to express my pain and be witnessed and the healing power, the healing salve of being witnessed by other human beings and your own expression, which is why the rites of passage for me is invaluable. <laughs> there's a long way to go and there's a lot here. Mm. Oh, Lee, thank you. Yeah. Folks, feel free to unmute and I would make a shape or make some sound, but like, oh, let oh, it in. Thank gorgeous. you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, let's take a moment to make any kind of sound that expresses and nourishes and does you justice right now. All righty. I'm going to take about five minutes open space to hear some voices, any, any, anything that wants to be said from anyone here. And then I think in the last five minutes, we'll close out hearing that song again with Melissa's beautiful um, photo montage of the, the work with Golden Girls Global around the world. So mm, the floor is open. What is moving in you? Like, well, yeah, what's alive here? Hey, Bryony, this is Dorje Kandro. I've got my video off. So hi, everyone. Hi, Dorje. Hi. I think what's mo I'm still sitting with what you said at the very beginning, that this has been the least popular of all your 
sessions and it's just like the the and i know i feel like my body knows why partly um and i mean i suppose that's just my my truth is is what what we've been talking about which is our own unprocessed stuff and i know in my own work with women i know how i haven't felt capable of working with young women and so aware like so aware of the need and this kind of crazy irony that if we don't work with today's young women well the same thing's going to happen they're going to turn up turn up like turn out like us and yet not having done the kind of work or just beginning to do that kind of work you're describing you know knowing i just couldn't do it and i suppose I suppose it looks like i'm not the only one in that situation so I suppose all we can do is do our work. And Melissa, when you were speaking, it was amazing because it felt like I'm witnessing someone there who's who's had that, you know, you've had that capacity. And thus you were able, you've been able to do that work and bring the healing. So yeah, I just wanted to share that reflection and 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 so much thanks for everyone's incredible depth and 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 yeah, power and beauty tonight. Thank you so much. Mm, beautiful Dorje, thank you for sharing. And yeah, I think in the in the in the adults, the men, the women, the the, the gender non-binary people, it's yeah, us getting to the point where we've done our work and our healing and are able to hold what we're talking about with the with the next generation is huge. Yeah, Melissa. I just want to speak this in because I think we had a really powerful model here of my idea of how we do this, because of course we're never really there there, whatever there there is. Um, and um, Don, the way you started being so intimate, letting us be so intimate with what you're doing right now and what you're working with right now is to me the way to do this work. And it may be that we don't tell, I have a group of uh, teenagers arriving here in a little bit. I'm not gonna tell them you know, that I have my uterus removed and blah, 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 but I will be sure to have somebody in my field know where I am most vulnerable so that I'm holding that consciously and somebody with me is also. And so if we can be honest about that, what, where our blind spots are, it's hard to know what they are until we know what they are, but, um, but what we're working with, you know, anything. And to bring that forward as a teaching and as part of how we show up, I think that gives us permission to get to it because they're not looking for perfection. They're looking for real people who are in the, in, on the journey, in the struggle, in the discovery, right there, maybe a few steps ahead. And that's just what, what I know is how to show up. And thank you, Don, for what you did there, because it, it changed the field and just being so real. Mm. I'd, love to, I'd love to add one more little thing, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so... You know, one thing that I've been learning is that um, part of being colonized is thinking that it's only good enough if the things we do are really grandiose and really big and on a super large scale and we can see the impact. And that undermines a lot of the brilliance and power that we all have as one individual human in this whole big world. And so there's a teacher of mine called, her, uh, their name is Adrienne Marie Brown. And a, a phrase that they've coined is small is all. Mm -hmm. And truly, when you kind of look out into the world, there are so many things happening that are revolutionary and impactful happening on small scales, like the way a mother approaches her daughter in the morning before sending her off to school or the way you catch someone's eye checking out at the grocery store and meet them in their humanity. And I, I just want to give voice here too, because when we have access to all the news channels that we do, and there's an immensity of things that we hear that are so big and so hard happening in the world, it can create this, um, kind of like double bind in the body where it's like, what am I doing that's making a change for all the need out there that I'm hearing about? And it can almost like depress or push down or repress or make your own self less vibrant and alive and impactful in the ways that you were born and meant to, to, to be here. And so just remembering small is all. And there's so many glorious little ways that love is blossoming open and shifts are happening and and um celebrating those and lifting those up and centering those is also 
doing the work of decolonizing our our psyches and the speed in which we we think we're supposed to be working. Mm, yeah. Thank you, Lee. Hey, everybody. It's the end. Or right, we're going to move into the end. I like keeping time agreements, so we're going to be done by 7.30 UK. So mm, let's all unmute and call off the thought and sing for a moment and hear each other. <laughs> Let's stop. Oh, it's so good to hear you and your humanity and your aliveness and that you're here and that and that you're in this. Um, oh, Melissa, would you mind stopping for a moment so we can just see all of each other? Thank you so much. Um, yeah, your aliveness, your your actual you that was here for this conversation. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Frederick. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Lee. And thank you, every single one of you for being here. Um, I have your emails. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the links. Um, Frederick shared some resources. Um, other people, if you you want, you know, you want to share the links to your work or resources, then please do, and I'll share that with everybody. Um, we'll go into Melissa's slideshow of this beautiful work with girls all around the world, and one more listen to the song. But first of all, to to let's raise our voices one more time to this courage to break through silences to enter numb areas of culture and ourselves and one another and bring love to the places that have gone quiet, bring love to the places that hurt and the, the courage to love, the courage to create and in whatever small way um, bring healing and holding to this world. Thank you so much for joining me. Maybe let's unmute and just make one more breath's worth of sound to that and whatever other end you want to add to it. Let's unmute and hear each other for one breath's worth of sound. Oh. 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 Wonderful. Melissa, over to you, my dear. Thank you all so much. And mm. Oh, 